kids have a very good grasp of what living things are, right? So in biology, I start by telling them, I'm not really going to teach you new stuff. I'm just going to give you a little bit more about why things happen, right? So the biggest one that I like to focus on is why do you breathe? Which is something that everybody knows if you stop breathing, not a good thing, but they don't really know why. They've been told forever that breathing, or they've learned that breathing is something that you have to do, but they don't know why. So then we get into why oxygen is important at the cellular level, why your body produces carbon dioxide through cellular respiration, and then it finally starts to kind of click that whole concept of why oxygen is so important to the body. Surprised that almost everything that they can observe has its roots in, well, anything that applies to them as organisms has its roots at the cellular level meaning that it's not just one big blob of you doing things. There's something that's going on at a much more microscopic level. It typically can be related back to the food that they eat, the energy that they generate from the food that they get. So kind of that whole what happens very tiny is going to affect you as a whole or even your environment as a whole is something. Like the, the vast range of, of how biology is integrated into everything they know and do. you go through math and this is how it goes, this is how it is, this is what it's going to do. Um, but for us, like, I could teach them something in September and by May there's something else that says something completely different. So for, you know, biology as being that ever-changing field of science that you really have to keep up to date with, you know, that, that stuff changes from here to here. We're talking about genetically modified organisms and how things are changing there with the FDA and how they have to report them and things like that. So it's just a, a, a dynamic science for sure.